Good afternoon, everyone. Last, last time I made a video about literacy in the course in literacy, I advocated for the use of problem-based learning as a way to cultivate deep learning. And it occurred to me that I needed to spend more time explaining how problem-based learning will lead to literacy. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about, talk about how we assess after uh, an activity is completed, what tools we have to assess the learning that take place, takes place. So I'm putting out there, first of all, that problem-based learning cultivates growth in literacy and that it promotes deep learning. So what do I mean about problem-based learning? I mean that we present students with a challenge. They have a problem to solve. If you look online, you'll see that so many schools have students attempting to set challenges before their students that they have to participate in the decision-making process of. For instance, whether or not to tear down an old building and put up a parking lot, or what kind of advertising campaign should, uh, should governments participate in to enhance voting turnout, or how do, how do we attack the problem of homelessness. We live in very sad times, and the news is constantly for, um, showcasing young people who have come up with solutions that nobody thought of, especially to deal with the issues that they're confronted with on a daily basis, like homelessness, for instance. So a problem-based learning is to charge a group of students with a problem that they have to think about as if they were a committee in a government or in a school, and they have to come up with solutions. So first of all, let me address how that deals with the four modalities of language. Language includes reading writing, speaking, and listening. So first of all, in order to solve any problem, anybody worth their salt does research. They need to figure out what they need to read up on in the direction of their research, but they have to read. Today, students would go to Google and they would read what it says on Google about websites. And then they would have to go to those websites and read what it says. And then they would have to assimilate in their head, making notes, writing, making notes, and thinking about the solutions to their problems and the things that they're looking for. So they're reading and they're writing. We know that problem-based learning is generally done in groups. We charge groups with coming up with the solutions. So therefore, those groups are talking. They have to discuss the problems, how they're going to look for the research, who's going to do what, and so forth. So we've already talked about reading, writing, and speaking. And since we're talking about it, when you're sitting in a group and you're having a discussion, one person is talking and the other people are listening. So no matter what you do, no matter what the challenge, students are processing and using the four modalities of language, communication, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. And as long as they're talking about the problem, they're processing, which leads to deep learning. 
<coughs> so let me talk about some of the other things that problem-based learning cultivate and their link to literacy enhancement. So first of all, at the end of the challenge, there has to be a way to report on the solution. And each group, charged maybe with the same question, has to come up with their own way to present their findings. It's like doing a, a, a scientific experiment. And each group in the class does the same experiment, but they have free reign in how they're going to talk about the results of their experiment. So that's where we are cultivating creativity. The students in each group have to decide, do they write a report? Do they do a video? Do they do a debate? Do they do a presentation of some kind? Do they do a moderate a, an interactive question and answer? There are so many different ways that children can demonstrate their new learning and the solutions to their problems. So they are being creative. And in that creativity, again, they're cultivating reading, writing especially, listening and speaking. Because in order to tell somebody what you've learned, you have to use language. You have to use news you have to use new vocabulary. If you're writing a report, you have to use new vocabulary that you didn't have before. You're cultivating the concept of teamwork. There was an uh, an editorial in the New York Times today about how the pandemic, when it's over, is going to leave behind it huge changes in education. That's because we have Zoom classes and teachers are communicating with groups and interacting with groups and individuals. And we are now beginning to see the potency of technology in creating links between people. That allows, today especially, but after the pandemic is over, using problem-based learning enables students who do not live together, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, to work together using technology to bring them together. I just had a long visit with an old friend using FaceTime. It was as if we were in the living room together. Imagine if you are working on a problem that you have to research and report on, a solution to, and you're working with three other students in your class, and you're using Zoom to meet and talk. You're integrating technology, you're talking, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, and you are speaking. <coughs> we know that learning requires constructivist knowledge creation. We create our own new learning on concepts. That's what you're doing when you're solving a problem and when you're trying to decide how you're going to present that information. You are unleashing creativity <coughs> in the minds of the students. Sorry, something went down the wrong way. <coughs> but you are also constructing new knowledge. I've talked in an earlier video about scaffolding of new concepts. We all have all these concept, concepts in our head. So when you're working on a problem, you're adding to your concepts of all kinds of different things. And you're adding to them by working with them, whether it be working with the ideas or working with the physical elements that you need. So again, you're using reading, writing, speaking, and listening. When you're solving a problem as a group, you are appealing to the multiple intelligences of the class, of the group, rather, sorry. 
One person in the group might be particularly creative. Another person might be particularly good at using language. Another person might be particularly good at reading. And another one might be particularly good at understanding the scientific concepts. But by working together, you are sharing ideas. You are bringing ideas together and applying it to the problem. And all the time, you are using four modalities of communication. Speaking, reading, listening, and writing. So, using a problem to help students explore, find solutions, collaborate, and stimulate deep learning all the time they are extending their skills in the four modalities of communication. If that isn't enhancing literacy, then nothing is. But I want to leave you with one final thought. Our society our societies, whether we're American or Canadian or European, and I'd like to think that someday some people from each one of those areas is going to stumble on my videos and listen to them. No matter where you're from, our societies all are looking for ways to move into the future, to create for our societies a comfortable standard of living. That standard of living is based on productivity in the society. And that productivity is dependent upon the skills and the creativity of its population. If we don't do anything to cultivate creativity and engage our students in real-life learning, using problem-based learning, we have no hope. That's as, as simple as it is. How did the United States become the most powerful country in the world? Just think of all the things that the Americans contributed that were invented in the 20th century. From radar to radios to televisions to computers to adding machines, to microphones, to, to radio and speakers, and so many different tools that the rest of the world wanted that led to raising the standard of living of the American people. The only way they did that was through creativity and through attacking problems. Every single one of those inventions that I talked about began with an idea in the head of somebody who thought, I know a better way to do this. Sometimes they worked alone, and sometimes they worked with all kinds of other people. It doesn't matter. The important thing is that they are solving problems that have real-world applications that contribute to the betterment of man. And all the time, they're cultivating all the skills that we want to cultivate that culminate in literacy and understanding the world. Next video, I'm going to talk about how do we know what was good or bad about the work that our students have done when we present them with the challenge. That's for the next video.